G'day fellas and welcome to a Beyond All Reason cast. Welcome to the brand new map that has just released called Ascendancy. Let's get into it because we have got an absolute banger of a match today. I'm confident because these are some of the best players in the world going up against one another. Let's take a look at our team captain spawning in on the south side of the map playing in the color blue. It's Flash. Look how small he is on this map. I tell you what, this map is an absolutely massive map. Or at least it looks like it's massive. I'd have to double check the, the digits. So he's going to be our team captain for the east side. Even though technically Malady is a slightly higher rating. I don't know what's happening there. Malady, I don't know how you gave over that team captainship to Flash. But uh, anyway, and over in the north of the map. Currently ranked <laughs> 54. Uh, true skill rating. We've got Ragnar on the arm, who is going to be our team captain for the West. Now, there's a couple things that I know about this map already, and a couple things that interest me a lot. The main thing that I'm going to be watching is this pass at the north of the map. So one of the things that we've seen players do on this map is basically take a commander and transport it up to the top. Because as you can see, it is quite the walk to get yourself all the way up there. And you can already see Kells doing a little bit of that already flying it out so gonna be looking to get a pretty decent advantage on that pass and the reason why you want to get that that pass is mainly because of the geothermal right like we love geothermals but not only that there's also rocks if we take a look at uh let's see if we can grab ragnar's commander or we'll just grab any commander there are lots of rocks up here there's 1300 metal and on this map in particular there's a huge amount of reclaimable metal and you can see 1.2k up here so kel's gonna be able to make himself at home up here but let's check in on the rest of the map because this is going to be a map that you're probably not familiar with. So there's no back line. There's no front line. There's just... Uh, at least that's my understanding. I mean, you could probably make an argument that Rum Cola's kind of the back line here or that Neptunio's kind of the back line here. But at the end of the day, they're still going to need to fight. When you were... If you were to compare it to, say, Glitters or something like that, it is significantly different, uh, in, in my opinion, the way that it plays out. It's, it's probably much closer to uh, a lot of the other 8v8 maps, which we will be covering more often than not. So I'm, I'm co covering this because I'd like to see a couple more maps getting thrown into the rotation. And I'll be honest, I, I probably haven't been helping that, you know, when all of my guides are for Glitters or for Supreme Straight. So I apologize, but I'm curious what you'd like to what you'd like to see. Would you like to see more, uh, more of a variety in maps or do we just stick it to Old Faithful between the old two? Anyway, let's uh, leave it down in the comments and, uh, and, and let me know. But uh, one of the key things to remember here is you need to be the carry. When, when it comes to Beyond All Reason, I've found that you need to be the carry. And as, as a person on, on a team with a very high rating, so we can see Ragnar here with 54 rating, the team is going to be looking to him to lead, to be making plays, to be making those, those, those opportunities for victory. That's what they're going to be looking for here because at the end of the day, he's got the highest skill rating. And of course, there's eight people on the team and there's other people on, on this team that could be making those, you know, th those plays. And that's definitely the case. But you've got to remember the reason why his true skill rating is so damn high is because he's so consistently finding ways uh, to, to become victorious. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. We're going to be following along with Ragnar as he is the highest rated skill player in the game. So let's turn on his POV and get a bit of an idea exactly what he's starting us off with. So first thing to note, he's spreading out his wind turbines, not getting too close. And he's only got the single wind turbine here. You can see he started as far forward as he possibly can just to try and get a race up that hill. He's struggling on the top of the hill. Already the static defense has come up from his opponent. Now, it's important to note, you've got the best player on the top here in Ragnar up against the worst player on the enemy team. I say the worst player, but I should probably say the lowest level player on the enemy team, Kells, who is still, you know, a very high rated player, higher rating than I've got. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll have to see exactly how Kells goes about it. At the same time, towards the middle, we've got Emra. Emra? Emery? Emery. I feel like Emery is probably the, the, the easier way to say it. Emery. Uh, beginning to push out, making their way towards the center. Uh, and you can see everybody's looking to do that. So we've got Tazarin here. Uh, we've got Izzy, Izzy Riyad. It's going to be tough for me to say all the all of these names. All of them definitely uh, f feel a little bit foreign. I'll say that much. And as an, an English native speaker, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, it, it is... What, what's what's the thing that I'm, I'm looking to say here? I am... Uh, I'm very sheltered from other languages. And, and I, I almost take pride in that. You know, <laughs> I you, you would never catch me... Uh, Riding an O with a, a couple of little dots above it, you know, no, nothing like that. But Ragnar is going to make the long walk up towards the top here, looking to try and gain control. There's a 3.1 mechs up here, which you'll be looking to take. At the same time, we've seen him take up a couple of mechs behind his base. He's looked to pick up a couple more. And look at the wind turbines that are coming down now. So going very, very heavy on wind. We've got one, two, 
three bots that are going to be going into energy. So big investment already coming out from that energy front and a lot of resources in the bank for him at the moment. Yet to go into any kind of construction uh, in, in the form of like a, a con turret or anything like that. Uh, and, and just going to be spamming out construction bots. Look at this. Another seven in queue. Not to mention the fact he's already got six out. Actually, make that seven. How many, look at that. Well, no, six because you're including the first one. So a huge amount here. He's going to continue pushing up. But we'll watch back towards the middle as there are currently trenches being drawn out between. We've got Emery and we've got Raiko on the other side who's going to be drawing it out at the same time towards the south side. Someone we haven't seen much of recently. We've got Dave down here. He is uh, He's looking to try and get over across onto the other side of the map. Trying to, trying to claim all of this metal. Remember, you, you not only want to claim it for yourself, but you want to deny it from your enemy. That's really, really important. So the radar comes up now. Ragnar, not going to be able to see it around the edge, but we'll be able to see all the way up to there. And look at that. Meets the commander and says, oh my lord, that's a commander. And he's got a whole army right there. I don't think I can deal with this. And immediately we can see Ragnar is just going to have to fall back away from this. Going to have to concede the metal. And we'll now have to fall back to plan B. So we'll have to see exactly what he goes for. Meanwhile, in the middle of the map, the push continues. Looks like players are beginning to secure uh, their positions. And now the question is, where are the plays going to get made? Who's going to go for those run buys? Who's going to be caught unaware at the same time? What are the back lines up to? I say, you know, I say the back lines, it's not really. I mean, he's keeping his commander back here. So it's kind of like a, he's kind of a back line, right? You know, this kind of reminds me of the old TA. I don't know, I don't know if you guys ever played Total Annihilation. This is, that's the game that this is based on. Uh, I guess you could call it a, a spiritual successor in a way. Um, it, it definitely, uh, th this, this is a very similar texture to, to what was in TA, and it reminds me a lot of that, but take a look at this, up towards the north now, so riding on board with Ragnar, what does he look to do, because he's lost out on the Maxes, so he's thrown down the aircraft plant, and we can immediately see he's gone into gunship, so maybe looking to go for like a little bit of a flank around the backside with the gunships, because think about it from the perspective of, of Ragnar, he's up against somebody who's now gain access to two mechs because that that's what it is right like you, it's not just the first mechs which he secured it's also the second mechs which he's yet to take but he's now taking now but on top of that it's also the geo this is the big thing for me the the geo event is is absolutely massive huge amount of energy guaranteed income uh, and it's also cheap so I, I i really like that but look at this we got a, a bunch of storks gonna be coming out right now ragnar gonna be looking to make some plays we're going to be riding on board with him as he begins to do that. And look, take a look at this. We've also got Centurions coming in. Now, Centurions are kind of like your tier 1.5 infantry. If I, if I was going to call them anything, I'd be calling them tier 1.5 infantry. Uh, just simply because they're so damn tough. And we can see he's going to pick them up for the moment. So just going to be looking to, to take the Centurions off for the moment. Fly them out. And I love, I love the fact he's got a couple of gunships in here just to deal with any stragglers or anything like that. But for the most part, I mean, Ragnar's essentially lost his lane at this point. Now... We, we talked a little bit about this map earlier and the fact that it's a brand new map. Take a look at that for for lane development. I guess you could call it. Like, there's nothing getting through there, man. There are, even spiders aren't going to be going over that. Actually, I, I take that back. Probably. The spiders will probably go over that. Uh, spiders can go over everything. That's that's one of the good things about being a spider enjoyer is that you can go anywhere, everywhere. And there we go. Ragnar now with a whole bunch of, of aircraft beginning to come out. Just a couple of light gunships. We'll ride back on board on the south side and see how Screwish is doing. As Rumcola begins to push up to his up, up towards his central location here as well. Uh, but uh, Screwish holding on for the moment. A lot of vehicles out on this map. Definitely more of an open map. Very similar to Glitters in that regard. You know, you're not probably going to see uh, a, a low amount of, of vehicles. And there we go. Ragnar is indeed on the move. Look at the commander. He's out here flying. You know, we got to get a... Let me let me see if I can... Hold on. I, I got There's a button for it. There we go. There we go. Now we're, now we're talking. Look at this baby right now. Everybody's out here. <laughs> look at the commander just being grabbed on. Oh my lord. It is, it, it is a thing of beauty. And look at him go over the top of the pass right now. So instead of dealing with his enemy head on, he says, I'm just going to take the back door. Don't mind me. Impressive stuff coming out from Ragnar already. And you can see that not a lot of resources left in the bank. He's going to try and make it over the pass. Look at the VTOLs, how, how quickly they go up over the top here. I don't even think this is being sensed out from his ally or from his enemy right now. Let's ride on board with Kells. Kells does see the red dots. Okay, so he sees the red dots. He knows that something is up. And you can see the elevation there is absolutely crazy. And behind this, keep in mind, there are two players that are in this vicinity. So there's the potential he comes, looks to land and maybe even start a whole new world over here. Meanwhile, back towards the base. Look at this. You can see the Thistles here. Going to be able to give a little bit of insight to the position. He's going to be careful not to lose the Centurion. Comes down, manages to get touched down. At the same time, I don't know where the commanders went. I think they've gone up a little bit further to the north. But all of those uh, Thistles now are going to be pretty much useless. I mean, he did a pretty decent job in holding. But Ragnar now going to be able to clean up this position from the top side. Very, very funny. 
when you think about the way that this has played out because towards the center, Raikou, Raikou, Ra I feel like Raikou has begun to push out, but do, is Emery going for a com bomb right now towards the front? You can't face, you can't face a gat gun head on like that. He's going for the bomb. Boom, hits the... Hits the bomb, hits everything. Still plenty of forces left here. And we can see that immediately Malady is going to be looking to cover this. There's a lot of metal that's come down right here. And I think it was it a control D. Actually, it's two, two commanders just kissing. Uh, meanwhile, up towards that top side, a lot of wreckage is now coming down. We can see back towards the base that you've still got Kells that's still building up here. Despite that imminent, imminent commander threat from Ragnar. Let's ride back on board with Ragnar, though, and just uh, just wait and see exactly what he looks to do as he throws down the radar, uh, just to try and find out any any more. And, oh, are they seaplane swarmers right there? Hold on, I'm trying to I'm trying to grab one of them. Give me a second here. We got seaplane swarmers already out, so these are the anti-air fighters uh, for the seaplane. So we got some seaplanes down here, which I, I love this already. Like uh, seaplanes are great because they are it's like a, a mix between tier 1 and tier 1.5 and they're not that expensive to get into you can see right there 1450 if you were to compare that to like advanced air uh it's it, it's advanced air is like what 3.2k 3.4k maybe even 3.6k it's a lot uh, that you've got to deal with so i like the fact that he's gone into this uh but immediately throwing down the nettle on the other side uh, and uh, at the same time, beginning to push through, we can see the Centurions. Now, one of the things I would just say to Ragnar is probably don't even... You don't even want a D-gun here, right? Like, you just want to kill everything the good old-fashioned way. Come in, reclaim it, or you could probably even throw down a bot lab and start um, start rejuvenating those bad boys, as I like to call it. It's not really rejuvenating. It's... it's uh, What's it actually called? <laughs> <laughs> it resurrecting you know you could start resurrect i mean you probably don't want to resurrect you know th this and there's the bot lab coming down right now but i mean you could probably resurrect wait w do you resurrect the solar and then reclaim the solar is that the big brain play because to reclaim or to resurrect you only need energy so technically like you resurrect reclaim that's a, that's a big brain play i wonder if that if people do that that, that, that that's a, that's a legitimate strategy all right well up towards the uh, the top side ragnar still holding on against any aggression from this top side let's check in with how his opponent is doing Kells, as he has made an escape to the mountains. You know, I feel like I'm watching a BBC TV show, or, you know, a, a reality TV right now. It is escape to the country, but except uh, the countryside is rather snowy up here. He's gone for T2. Now, he's, he's secured the geothermal, which is massive, uh, but he doesn't have a whole lot of metal, and that's important to remember. He's only got that six metal coming through at the moment. And look how much Ragnar denied. One, two, three, four, five mexes uh, from here, and then I mean technically maybe six I'm not sure if that, that belonged here uh, to uh, to Raiko or not, but Raikou's, Raikou's lost a lot of, of uh, a lot of power at this point uh, and now falls into this awkward position of not having a commander, not having a base. And look at this, a little bit of a run by coming through from Emery. Very, very nice stuff. Let's run on board with Malady for a bit because we haven't really been watching him play. I, I, I'll be honest, okay. The first time I saw Malady, the, the, th the thought crossed my mind. I'm like, this guy is either a chick I don't know why I thought it was a chick. I think because it had Malady in my name. Or it's it's Milady. You know, like the, the hat tippers. Like, if you think of like your standard Redditor. That, that's what I was thinking when I when I thought of Malady. But th then I realized, uh, I think I was watching Snooper stream and he said Malady. And I'm like, oh, it's Malady. Of course, it's not Milady. Uh, but may maybe that maybe I'm the Redditor. Maybe, maybe I'm the undercover Redditor. I'll be honest. I'm not an undercover Redditor. I'll have you know, I'm actually a mod. <laughs> I'm actually a mod on the Age of Empires 4 subreddit. I'm not even kidding you. Uh, uh, th you know, th there you go. If there's anybody who's going to know about Miladies, uh, it, it is yours truly. Uh, but uh, nice little defense coming through from Malady at this point in time. I like the sneaky peek down here as well. Going to be looking to push through. Trying their best with the incisors. Not going to be able to find too much here though. Still, and now, now some bulls coming out. Malady already in the T2. Let's take a look at the bases and see how they're going. So all the T2 uh, mechs back up at home are online. Where is the... W was this a resed T2? I, I don't see the... I don't see the lab. Maybe I'm just... Maybe I'm just going crazy here. I saw a bull, right? Uh, yeah, I did see a bull. Where did that come from? Did it get taken out? W was, there a, was there an attack from the north side, potentially, that I missed? But now look at this. Look at this. Units now starting to stream in from Ragnar, from the north, the Centurions, together with the pawns. These guys have got their veterancy in. Behind this, we see Trash Panda, who, who we haven't even mentioned this game. Trash Panda, there's so many, ga there's so many gamers right now uh, in this in bar. I love this. I, I love the fact that we're, we're 14 minutes through this, and I still haven't mentioned one of the players that is one of my favorite players in Age of Empires 4, let alone in bar. And he, he's on the enemy team. And it's just like, because there's so many people. It's Trash Panda, ladies and gentlemen, a.k.a. Recon. Uh, you're, you're, I'm not going to say he's a world champ. He's not a world champ. Uh, but but he's, he's pretty damn good. He's pretty good. Uh, definitely, you know, top 16 
uh, player when it comes to Age of Empires 4. He, he was at uh, Red Bull Wallalo, a, a $500,000 tournament. I got to meet him there in Germany. That was a lovely time. Uh, let's let's ride on board now once again with Ragnar. Let's check in with him. Let's see how he's doing because there is magic happening in the north of the map. He's thrown down a T2 lab. Look at this. A couple of beamers here as well, just in case the enemy's getting any ideas about coming down here. I love this. The T2 lab on in the enemy's base. He's literally come across to the enemy side and said, not only am I going to make a T1 lab, I'm going to make a T2 and I'm going to start putting it right where it don't belong. And look at, look, oh man. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. It is, uh, it, it is the ultimate. I mean, I'm not going to say it's BM, but it's not the nicest of menace. So let's check back at home. You'll see that there's a lot of rings up here. Um, this is one of the, the, re or the requests I've made to the bar devs uh or, or uh, I, I don't know necessarily wouldn't say the bar devs but I, I've, I've asked is there a way to do it and people said not really but it should be easy i'd love to have different profiles one for spectating and one for playing because when i'm playing these are these lasers like the, the rings are really important but when i'm spectating it's not so important because i can always just pick the i can just always hover over the top there you can see and i, I can see how far it goes so i don't really need to be seeing all of that stuff all the time and i know i can turn it off but then you gotta remember i gotta turn it back on and I, I've, at the moment, I've got like seven different things I got to turn off and turn on. I got to turn off the spectator chat. I got to turn off the curses. Have you ever watched a game with the curses? And like, there's 34 people spectating this game right now. The curses go everywhere. It's crazy. It's, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. But like, it is distracting as hell. But look at this. This Ragnar in a little bit of trouble right now. Might have to think about evacuating the commander. Otherwise, he's going to leave potentially a lot of resources back here i don't i'd almost be tempted if i'm ragnar to start reclaiming i think that could be a big play uh, but we do see now a whole bunch of seaplanes coming in from the south it's, it's mr mcdonut someone i didn't expect to see not the donut man uh he's coming out th that commander actually you, you know what you do degun the lab before you go you got to degun the lab before you go oh did he reclaim that was that a clutch reclaim it disappeared completely ragnar's now maxing out on he got the reclaim off Oh my lord, I think he threw down the comb bomb there as well. I'm not 100% sure, but I, I'm 99% sure he got the reclaim on that lab. What a clutch moment. Manages to get out of there with how much metal is that? 2,900 metal. Denies that from the enemy. Puts it back into his own kitty. And now back at home, he gets started. Aphis. Oh, I love it. Oh, Ragnar. I'll tell you what, mate. I, I, I thought I was fans of... I thought I was a fan of stardom, but I, it turns out I might be a fan of Ragnar as well because this is starting to get very very clutch i'll be honest i'm, I'm still a fanboy for, for for stardom he is uh he's somewhat incredible uh but uh i, I think I, I got room in in my uh in, in my uh fan circle for you but take a look at this counter push now on the south side the bulls beginning to make their way forward right now kayuma 001 with the big bull raid coming in rum cola standing by with the commander looks like he's he was in stealth for a little bit didn't have enough to degun now manages to get the degun on the second bull as well Three of them making their way through. I think he got a third one back there. Damn, Rum Cola. How are you managing to get those through? And look at this. The, the Bulls not focusing the right targets. Bulls, you guys got to get your act together, my friends. What are they focusing down? Let's, ha let's have a look and see. Looks like for the moment, it's just going to be the uh, the advanced metal extractors, which is definitely... An, it, at, it's, it's a choice. We'll say that much. I mean, there's not really much else in here. The base has been built pretty well by Screwish. But at the same time, look at this push coming onto the front. So just when we thought everything was going well in the north for the West team... Down on the south side, things are starting to get a little bit shaky. Look at this, more more tanks rolling in. So many tanks coming through right now. At the same time, lightning lightning tanks, aka the Jaguars. These used to be called Panthers back in the day. Uh, they're, they're, they're such great units. I, I love them, just really mobile units. And now that counter attack from Ragnar is looking to try and break through. Let's let's get rid of the um, let's get rid of the the fog of war. You know, I, I always like to to throw the fog of war on because it gives you a bit of an idea of what the player sees at the time and what they understand. Uh, is, is happening but look at this counter attack coming through right now from trash panda but it's a huge emp i don't even see, where did it even come from he must have oh he, he just made a specter at the last second gets it out manages to put a whole bunch of these guys into status into stasis rather but a couple of them still managed to make it out a lot of them are low health though take a look at this not a single one above 73 percent health because one of them was on 72 percent health all the other ones are really low some big chain reactions coming in fortunately they're spaced apart just enough I love the fact that they've been spaced apart, but there's still chain reactions that occur. Those damn energy converters just keep me away from them. I don't, I don't want to know about them. And now up towards the north side, it looks like that little bit of an, an attack coming through from the hounds. 
is going to be dealt with once again by some banshees. These guys are just everywhere in this map. Now, one of the things to note is I don't think we've got any seaplanes coming through on this west team just yet. And there's opportunities for them. There are bodies of water everywhere on this map that you could look to thro throw them down. And take a look at this. Big attack coming through. The swarm is looking to come through. Going to be able to take out all of those, those banshees. Doing a great job and just taking out the, the, the entirety of this front base here. So you, you're going to have somebody... Who, who, whose base is this? Was it Is Isriad? Isriad? I think it was. No. Wait, is that him up here? No, that's that's him up here. Uh, Tazurin. No, that, that's Tazurin's base there. there. There was somebody's base right here that used to be. Uh, it is it is no more. And the bulls have done a lot of work. I tell you what, the more and more I see bulls, the more and more I, I, I start thinking, maybe I should become a vehicle player. You know, I'm, I'm such an infantry-based player. I really love my infantry. I love all, all my different types of infantry. You know, I, I do not discriminate. Uh, wh whether that's your T1, you know, I, I love a good little bit of uh, little bit of uh, Centurion spam. Not really. I'm, I'm more of a thug kind of guy. Uh, you know, w w my T2, I love my hounds. I love my uh, my snipers. I love my welders. And then, oh, don't even get me started on T3. And you can see, even see Trash Panda coming, is typing in the chat right now. Are we winning? It looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, you got your Aphis up, Trash Panda. You're having a good day. You're making, you're making moves over here, but you've got to keep in mind that towards the north, Ragnar took out two people. I mean, I say he took out two people. Kells is kind of coming back online, but where's Raiko? Raiko's, I mean, technically Raiko's still in the game, but no one's given him a con. No one's given him a, an energy converter. No one's given him a, a fusion reactor and said, here you go, buddy, rebuild over here. And you got to remember that when you lose a player, that is an extra hand that you're losing. In fact, I mean, most people have two hands. Even though technically the average is below two, I will say that much, uh, we, we can assume that the Raikou probably had two hands. Uh, so you're losing two hands there. And th those are hands that can be doing things, right? Like uh, eventually, l let's just say you, you, you give him a con, you give him uh, you give him a couple of advanced solars, you give him a couple of energy converters, what, whatever. He starts building back here. And eventually he starts building up and eventually it gets to the point where he makes an Aphis. And now all of a sudden he's a threat. And, you know, he, he's, he, it depends how long he wants to sleep for, what he wants to do, but it, it, to lose a player is massive. So hopefully we see him come back into the game. And not only that, but now on the other side, Screwish has just left. Look at that. So we've got players down on both sides here. Both both sides are having players leave the game, which is it, it's, it's disheartening. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I'm playing and someone leaves on my team, I'm like, oh, man, like if that guy just held on like we we had this man we had this and like the 46 bulls are rolling into their base and i'm on my 14th aphis and i'm just like bro you should have just waited <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding it's not really like that i don't i don't need more than six aphis anymore i don't know if you guys know this but you don't need more than six aphis that's it six aphis that's the maximum you need because after your sixth aphis you just start making your uh, your lol cannon and then you just win with a lol cannon it's it's super easy Super easy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, at, at this point, Ragnar having a little bit of trouble up towards the north side. You can see that an Archangel has been brought. Multiple Archangels are here ready. He's learned his lessons from previous times, Kells has. And continues to push down the mountain. You know what they say about coming down the mountain? She'll be coming down the mountain when she comes. But I think Kells is a, is a guy. So technically, it's not right. But look at, look at the tick spam coming out right now. Huge amount of ticks out here. Going to be able to provide that line of sight. Meanwhile... What, what are those units? Hold on. Are they Whistlers? No, Jaguars. They, they, they look so weird, man. I, I, I feel like they're facing forward because normally you see like the little wheels at the front and the treads at the back, but I, I'm pretty sure that they're facing like... They, they, they should be going in like this direction. I can't actually draw because I've got like... I've, I've turned this off. They're facing in that direction. They just look so strange, don't they? Big tick numbers starting to come out though. And now the sharpshooters are out. One of my favorites. Valady looking to try and carry. Remember that... As, as the as the top rated player on the team, it's it's you who needs to make those plays. You can't just be breaking even with with the enemy. And what are these? Are, are these ticks? Why does it look like he's got like a custom tick skin on or something? To me, that's what it looks like. Maybe there's a, just a little bit too much yellow. Maybe maybe I'm getting an angle that I normally don't see on the ticks. And that's that's why I'm uh, I'm I'm looking at. They they kind of look a little bit like ladybugs. Hey ticks. All right, let's check out towards the middle. More attacks coming through, and you can see right now the gunships, the sabers are coming in. These are the seaplane gunships, and it definitely feels like air is a little bit uncontested at the moment for our east team. They've got a huge amount of swarmers out here. 25. Cyclones, rather. Wait, aren't the cyclones? Yeah, the cyclones are the swarmers. Never mind. Uh, so, yeah, at this point, I mean, if, if I had to give an advantage to somebody, I would say the advantage is with the east team. Even though the West team managed to take out one player. I mean, Screwish tapped out as well, right? So it's kind of fair in that regard. And even though the second player is is uh, just about to get eaten alive, 
towards this north side. He's doing all right, right? Like, he's got the fusion back here. The commander's still alive and throwing down the mercury now. I mean, this, this is a, a bold investment here for Kells. It's going to take a while to get this online. So perhaps, yeah, going going for some T1 maybe makes a little bit of sense here. I would have loved to have seen the Cobra come out or the, or the Arbalist come out. The, these things don't feel like they take as long to build. I, I love just throwing these down in a jiffy. They're, they're really, really nice. But towards the center of the map, though, th that air mass continues to build. Let's ride on board on the south side as Flash, who's technically the team captain, but is not actually the point captain, is, is holding for the moment. But that's it. Just holding. Remember, you've got to make those plays. Now towards that north side, Kel's in trouble. You can see that the focus is going to be on that fusion. If that fusion goes down, everything goes down. Commander still managing to stay alive with a little bit of health. That's going to be it. Kel's now going to be dwindled down to absolutely no units. And now two people on that east side are going to be thrown out on this map. If you'd like to see more of this map, please let me know down in the comments. I'm enjoying it so far. There's a lot of action here. I like the fact that we've got the, these different lanes and they feel... I, f I don't necessarily feel like they have different roles. Oh my lord, look at the size. Okay, you know, we were just talking about air and uncontested. Uh, but uh, I don't think you have to worry about uncontested anymore. Have a look at this. We got Ragnar, who's built up a huge mass of air. A whole bunch of... Uh, what do we got? High winds. I always forget the name of them. I, I just remember them as hawks and hurricanes, but I think these... What are these called? These are called like uh, blizzards or something, right? Yeah, blizzard. I remember thinking uh, blizzard. It's, it's kind of close to the hurricane, right? So it makes sense. And now coming in these big strategic bombers. Let's see what he's able to find over the top of the cliff. The strategic bomber is going to be coming down, looking to try and make ends meet. And look at the bombs, how far they go onto that Aphis that's yet to build. He's make, made it blow and now continues to look for his next target. He continues coming through. We'll ride on board with a little bit more of a top view. As the next command comes in, it's going to be going down on top of the fusion. Big explosions inside the base now of Kayuma. And now that next target not going to be met because the Arbalists have come up in time. You can see Trash Panda throwing down that Arbalist in the, in the center of the base and safely neutralizing the attacks right there. And what, what do we got going on here? A little bit of fireworks, a little bit of celebrations. I, they're actually reclaiming all of the enemy units. I don't actually know how to do that. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't know how to reclaim the enemy units correctly. Because every time I do it, I think it's because I use... Uh, where, where is it? I, I use a a widget, which is the priority reclaim turrets. And I I feel like this interferes with it or intervenes with it. I don't know exactly how, how it works, but it, yeah, it, it, it doesn't... Maybe I'm just doing it wrong. But T3 are out right now. Looks like it's going to be from Trash Panda, of course. Recon, as he's known in Age of Empires 4. Looking to, to maintain the front here. The Marauder is going to do a decent job of it, but obviously the ticks very frustrating to deal with. You'll need to bring out something to, to deal more effectively with them. Maybe look into a battle mech. Could be a good option for him. And now at the same time, a continued attack up towards that top side. Look at this. More and more ticks coming out here. And Ragnar now looking to take control of this top side. You can see he's actually just reclaimed and now looking to throw down his own. Uh, oh, never mind. He's, he, th this guy is just going to go and reclaim. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, with these ticks, how much... I, I don't think these ticks can come down here, right? Like, there, there's... There, there is... There's a, there's a little bit of a cliff right there. And don't get me wrong, they're, they're bots, and they kind of look like... They kind of look like spiders. But they're not. They're not spiders. So, Ragnar for the moment. Let's check in with the base. Big air transition right now, and I love this. I, I think the easiest way to win games is air transitions. And we can see Ragnar now, now really looking to take advantage of that. Whole bunch of, uh, of air coming through. A lot of gunships... Looking to begin the attack, and look at the look at how they're attacking the Arbalist right now from such height. These guys are, are very, very ballsy. I tell you what, I'm scared of heights. Might be scared of something like that, but look at this behind the enemy lines. The bombs come through, and it hits everything. Manages to keep the Aphis alive, but all of the advanced energy converters do go down, and with that, all of the blizzards are going to fall down as well. Manages to keep a couple of the energy converters alive in that, but... That was a big, big attack. And now the second wind is coming in. Watch out, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening. Look at all the defenses being thrown down on the back line by Trash Panda. He's trying his best to get it through the chainsaw, just popping off nonstop. But the number one rule of building an economy is protecting it. And unfortunately for Trash Panda, he did not protect it well enough. And Trash Panda types in the chat, shit, dead. <laughs> Indeed, Trash Panda, things are starting to look a little bit sour by the hour. And look at the huge tick army that's coming through for Ragnar right now. There, there's so many things that I learned from watching a, a, a really good player like this in the late game. You, the, the, the switch into air. Uh, the, the tick spam. 
just uh, trying his best to, to really just take over the game with as many ticks as he can. Look to try and get past the enemy in any way that they can, because if they don't have something to do with the ticks, if these get through, you're going to be in trouble. But look at the Reclaim. Reclaim coming through once again. He's looking to try and eat alive all of these ticks. Take the medal for himself. And he gets a couple of, of shots off. But it doesn't look like it's going to be much more than that. But the explosion on the advanced energy converters will be definitely worth it after that. Still more ticks looking to come through and more bulls looking to rampage. Let's check in on that south side and see how these players on the south are doing. As they've been holding on for the most part, especially when you take a look at, at Flash. He's managed to push a decent way across here, managing to secure three more metal slots for himself. But still going to have trouble though. Neptunio with the Pulsar on the front. A couple of pit bulls here as well. Good luck getting through that with anything short of a nuclear weapon. That is, uh, is going to be tough. And now those bulls looking around the corner. Keep in mind, Malady's up here. Not much of an economy behind this, but there's still a little bit of a base that remains and trying to hold on desperately. But the bulls are just so damn strong. Look at them just rampaging over the top of all of the units, making their way through. I, don't, I, I think that... Is that Reclaims coming through? Yeah, Reclaims coming through. Not going to be able to find it, though. And the Advanced Bot Lab goes, goes down. And with that, the Fusion Reactor was so close to being resurrected. But I tell you what, it wouldn't have even made a difference because the bulls would have come in. They would have said g'day as well. Meanwhile, up towards that top side, more air looking to come through. A whole bunch of Cyclone Swarmers. And now the Marauders. Looking to try and defend against it. Really having a lot of trouble. And you got to ask the question, who's making plays right now? Because it doesn't feel like anybody on this East team is making plays. T2 vehicle plan is out. Not a lot of penetrators here. Oh, so, sorry, not penetrators. What are they called? Never mind what they're called. We've got the Stiletto coming through. This is one of those new units that I'm still not yet not used to. The Starlight. The Starlight's what I'm thinking of. And the Aphis gets targeted down. Big boom, big explosions. And I think that might be a good game. I mean, how do you come back from that? You've had Ragnar just take out player after player after player this game. They have lots of penetrators mid, says Tabesh. Let's take a look and see exactly how many they've got. They got a they got a lot of they got a lot of penetrators mid. Uh, I'll give Tabesh that, that is for sure. This slow death push coming forward. Remember, these these units are really good if you're winning. But if you're if you're losing, <laughs> they're not good because they can't fire while they're going backwards. They can fire while they're going forwards. Uh, but uh, on that south side, a little bit of a push coming through. Looks like the welders have made their way in. I like the fact that we've got double smugglers here as well as the double compasses. One of my favorite unit compositions right here. The sharpshooters and the welders together. The welders provide that really strong front line. The sharpshooter is just able to take out anything in barely a few hits. And you can see those shots coming out now on the bulls. But at the same time, look at the attacks coming in. We've got the rattlesnake on the south side, the pulsar on the top side. Is it the pulsar? The, yeah, the pulsar. The pulsar. Oh my gosh, there we go. The pulsar. Uh, able to shut that down completely. You can see Kayuma saying, how did we lose top so bad? Com drop. Indeed, com drop. I did not expect that. And I, I mean, my, my question is, you know, if this map becomes sort of more mainstream, if people start playing this map all the time, Obviously, there's a big fight that's going to be looking to happen up here, but maybe once you secure this area, maybe people will look to bring the commander back down. But it, it makes it very difficult because now all of a sudden you do have to defend multiple locations with no access or with only one commander. And you're always prone to those comm drums, but look at the ticks now coming through. Evaporated by the, by the lightning tanks, doing a wonderful job. But four of them do make their way through. They're going to be looking for any kind of target. They find the energy converters. That'll do. That'll do, he says. But he's on, even if he does, he's only going to get one or two of them. Look, he's not even going to get one. He's just going to get reclaimed, the poor fella. And now in the middle of the map, we've got ourselves another attack coming through on that top side. Mr. McDonut is going for it. You know, just when I just when I thought it was over, Emery says, Emery says, no, sorry, Bob. I got myself a little bit of a counterattack, but look at the Nighthawks coming. The Nighthawks? Are they Nighthawks? The high winds? The high winds. Where did I get Nighthawk from? Is the Nighthawk the core one? It must be the core one. It used to be, it used to be a vamp back in the day. I'm not talking about the lady. I'm talking about the, the, the anti-aircraft fighter. Second. Aphis now coming up as well for Ragnar. So making sure he's scaling that energy well. But I think one thing to note is he's really kept up unit production while making these Aphis. Perhaps going into the, the standard fusion could have been better. Like he's been pedal to the metal. You can see he's stalling out on, on metal for quite some time. I just realized that rhymed. Pedal to the metal. Oh no, it didn't rhyme. It's just the same word. Pedal to the metal. I guess it kind of makes sense, right? Pedal to the metal. Uh, because the, the metal is quite literally pedaled. Uh, but uh, I mean, at, at this side, you'd have to give this a significant advantage to the West team. Like we can see their stats in the top right hand corner. Uh, about double of both things. They've kept their bases really well together. 
right? Like, there's not been any big raids that have come through, and you can just see that, like, Ragnar's just done an incredible job of just hitting constantly the enemies with raid after raid after air raid. And now on the front line, look at this, a single Titan looking to try and defend against all of the ticks. They're going to make their way through. Beamers are back here as well, beaming their way. Light laser turret also going to be helping out defending. The reclaim, com reclaim comes in. And all those ticks managed to get what appeared to be just a couple of advanced solar collectors. So not too bad of a defense there. But Tabesh is really going to be holding on for dear life as these battle mechs, the Razorbacks, make their way on the front. You can see the Beamers doing a decent job of dealing with them, but just not enough of them here. And now at the same time, the Titans look like they're going to be going down here. Titans, keep in mind they don't don't leave that nuclear explosion or don't have that nuclear explosion when they when they die like the uh, like the uh, the juggernaut does. So they they're a little bit less potent, but you still want to try and kite them the exact same way that they're being kited at the moment. Rum Cola doing a good job. I tell you what, Rum Cola's played pretty well this this game. I, I'll be honest, I, I, I'm impressed with Rum Cola. Not just a delicious tasting beverage, but also quite a good player. I'll be honest, Rum and Cola was never really my thing. Uh, every time I had rum, my stomach would hurt. And so I was just like, you know what? I'm just not going to have rum. Well, it wasn't, wasn't a rum guy. I say it wasn't in the past tense because I, I don't drink anymore. Yeah, I'll be honest. I, I do drink, but it, it's Red Bull. And Red Bull doesn't really count. It's not alcoholic. Uh, at, at least the, the way that I have it. But you can see right now that the, the ghosts are going to make their way forward. Flash is looking for a way back into this game. I, I really don't know how, how, the, how the East team could get back into this game at this point. I mean, air raids are kind of out of the question, right? Because... You've already got a really dominant air player on the enemy side. They've got a lot of air out. So that's not really going to be a possibility. You could look for maybe a nuke or two, but even then, there's a good chance that your enemy's got really good anti-nuke coverage. And Tabesh going to reveal the commander. Oh, the commander goes down a little bit before the D-guns could come out. I don't know exactly what happened there for Tabesh. Was he looking for a reclaim or something? He might have been looking for a reclaim, and now the bull's going to be coming through. Almost certainly, it's just going to be a good game. I mean, I, I say almost certainly it's going to be a good game. I think I've called GG like 17 times this game. But uh, this, this time it's definitely GG for the east side. Surely. Look, look at all the units behind the enemy lines as well right now. Mr. McDonough defending with a, a single commander. Get out of my base. Get out of my base. No, that's my base. Because that's... Wait, what, where's he from? Mr. McDonough. He's from Sweden. Get out of my base. Get out. <laughs> I, I tell you what, I don't know. I know what a Swedish accent sounds like. I don't know how to do one. It's probably just going to sound like a German accent or something like that. And uh, it's probably not the best to be doing, you know, random German accents out there for, for Swedish people. But I, I think overall, like, this has been a pretty solid game. I'm impressed. Good game does get called in the end. You got to say Ragnar was the hero of the day. And as, as to be expected, right? Not not to discredit the other people on the team or not, not to gi give a disservice to the other people on the team because they did, they did their job. But when it comes to carrying the game, when it comes to getting those kills, finding those kills, finding those plays, Ragnar definitely demonstrated why he is ranked 54 true skill rating here. That's impressive. That is really, really good. And we can see Raikou actually slept for 23 minutes. Oh, you know what? That, <laughs> that's at the end of the game. Don't worry. That, that, I, I remember Raikou fighting quite early on. That's uh, that's at the end of the game. So that's going to be it. Let's take a little bit of a look at the stats, though. Let's take a look at... Uh, we'll have a look at, at uh, damage dealt. Uh, I don't know why I can't... I, I wish I could do this. So damage dealt, highest on this team here. Uh, we've got Emery and Izzy. Izzy raid uh, coming out on top. On the enemy side, though, on the, on the eastern side... Looks like our top was Kayuma. Uh, let's take a look at energy. I always like to see who the biggest boomers are because as a as a boomer, it is my job. And by the same token, it looks like Izzy Riyad uh, just just doing doing God's work over here. Most metal, most energy. Well well played, mate. Uh, and you can see those units just pumping out nonstop. Really big boom back here, actually. I tell you what, if there's ever been a pocket, this is this has got to be it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we'll leave it there. We'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you later.